in the Muslim world, and also more recently the YouTube video that has been seen as blasphemy and very much uh, you know uh, hurt the feelings of many Muslims. Uh, the incident of you know um, you know uh, the um, burning of the Quran, all of these incidents, they create the very big violent reaction in many parts of the Muslim world. Of course, violence itself is something that should not be tolerated, and it's not the right way to address any kind of issue because violence breeds only more violence. But I also have been asked the question. Like, you know, uh, some people would say, okay, we can tolerate, for example, a cartoon uh, about, you know, Jesus in, in one of the magazines or newspapers, you know, that shows Jesus, you know, peeing, and it says, you know, that Jesus turned uh, water to, uh, to Europe. And this is something that would be considered very, very, very offensive in the Muslim context, because in Islam, this is something that Western people, I think, need to understand better. There is a very, very high level of respect to all religious symbols and all the messengers of God. This is a very, very sensitive topic for any Muslim. We are always required to really show the utmost respect possible to all religious figures and symbols and prophets and messengers, and not to treat them in any way that could be uh, not only defamatory or negative, but even treats them as just ordinary human beings is considered offensive, let alone portraying them in negative cartoons or in some kind of video or some kind of uh, you know, media um, representation that is hurtful. This is really intolerable to Muslims worldwide. So this needs some kind of understanding of the cultural and religious context and the sensitivity of these issues, which is very, very important, and I think is somehow missing or lacking uh, in, in many parts of the Western world. Engagement and education. That the core <coughs> value around which all society should be organized when it comes to speech is the encouragement of engagement and discussion rather than proscription. Discussion, we need to be respectful and tolerant. I do think there is a baseline around which the international community can and should agree on free expression. And that's articulated in Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, there may be disagreements about the margins, where to draw the lines of Article 19, but I would not agree that we ultimately have to define the scope of free expression based on culture, religion, different. Because I think that's a very dangerous path to go down in which you're no longer in a place where you can say something is good or bad uh, from society to society. society. Sorry, that was more than that. That's okay. Um, but but I, 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 you know, I will insert my own viewpoint here and say that I, I agree with you. And in the work that I've done abroad in developing democracies, I've always cleaved that line that freedom of expression is the fundamental human right. It's not uniquely American. We like to think that we're moving towards perfecting it, but this is not an example of America trying to impose its values. I believe it's its values that are. Yeah, I'd like to pick it up from there, because this is really interesting. I think that, you know, while people worldwide will not tell you, I'm against freedom of expression, or I don't buy into it, there's really a, a problem with definition. And like Greg was, you know, saying, this is a very, very important fundamental point. If we're talking about apples and oranges coming from different perspectives, different cultural, religious, uh, you know, social backgrounds, political contexts, then what constitutes freedom of expression in one particular context, in one particular society, in one particular framework, may not necessarily be perceived as such. Websites. There's been a hugely volatile debate in Thailand, for instance, in part about the alleged majestic laws there um, uh, that took place on our social media platform, on the embassy's site. And so the question there was, should we permit the full range of speech as we would in a public forum in the United States, or should we, do we need to draw lines that are slightly more constrained than the U.S. law would allow? And the decision has been that certain types of offensive speech uh, or offensive interaction, uh, we, we shouldn't allow those that are embassy websites be used as vehicles for such interaction. But it's an issue that, it's a challenging one for me because it's a U.S. government platform. What is the justification for not allowing the full scope of speech such as we would in a public square in the United States? It's very much a double-edged sword. 
on one hand, you have this golden opportunity of you know the borderless uh, you know internet. It's global. It's uh, universal. People can you know reach other people across different languages, religions, cultures. You name it. So it's a wonderful opportunity. But on the other hand, if it is not really somehow uh, you know I don't want to use the word regulated, but somehow uh, you know. Um, really put in the right perspective, things can go out of hand. Because there's the curtain of anonymity, you don't know the identity of the person that you are dealing with, some people hide behind you know, fake identities, fake names, there could be absence of moderators on some of the platforms and discussion forums, uh, some of the religious scholars may not be present, and that can lead to some kind of infuriating uh, hate speech or you know, attacks to others who are not belonging to the same denomination or sect or religion.